I think we have 22 Democratic presidential candidates in Washington. How many people, David, do we actually have running to be the next PM? Well, there's, it's approaching that number, I think, uh, Tom. You know, more and more people throwing their hat into the ring. And this is one of the big problems, that the Prime Minister said she's going to step down. So there's this joshing for position uh, to take over from her. She's very much seen as a lame duck uh, Prime Minister. And now even the Labour Party, when they're trying to get these talks through, now we're hearing from the Labour side, well, look, we can't trust anything you say. So it's not even worth continuing to get a deal done because, you know, we're going to be negotiating with someone else um, in a, in possibly in a matter of weeks. So that admission that she's going to step down, she fired the starting goal on the leadership race, and they're all joshing for position. It means she's even less likely to get uh, anything approaching her deal through. But, uh, James, does the outcome of Brexit change if you have a pro-Brexit prime minister such as Boris Johnson, or is actually the arithmetic, first of Parliament, the same, and no deal off the table because Parliament does not want a no-deal Brexit? The, the, the parliamentary arithmetic is critical, and it's very hard to see a deal getting through, given where people are positioned at the moment. And one might reasonably believe that if Mr Johnson were to become PM, the first thing he wanted to do is call an election to see whether he has a mandate to pursue a different strategy. So I, I would say that were he, he in charge, it's general election time. OK, um, general election time or second referendum time? Are, are, are these likely, you know, are, are they becoming more realistic? I think certainly what James said, I think that's right, a new, a new Tory PM, certainly a more Brexit-leaning one, is then in opposition directly to Parliament. And that means an election. But, you know, the numbers for the second referendum, it's very interesting. Bloomberg's Rob Hutton ran this analysis earlier this week. And if you read that story, it shows it's becoming increasingly likely that the way out of this um, could be um, actually changing policy on the government side and having another vote because Labour the, and a lot of the Remain supporting parties are saying, look, we will vote for your deal, Mrs May, if you add on what they're calling a confirmatory uh, vote or a second referendum or a people's vote, whatever you want to call it. That has become more likely. Now, that's going to take a long time to organise. There'll be huge fights over it, but it is a little bit more likely. And the glimmer of hope for the Remain side is that the whole decision could be reversed. David, can I ask you one very quick question? I travel the country, as I'm sure you do, and I talk to people and they tell me that they're going to vote even more emphatically for Brexit. Yeah. I don't think the people who want a second referendum have a clue that that's actually the mood of the people outside of London. I think you're absolutely right. And I think if you go to places which voted heavily to leave, that is the attitude you get. So, you know, and listen to Mr Farage, you know, he's getting big crowds turning up saying just that thing, you know, let's have another vote in, perhaps and leave would get an even bigger mandate. The truth is we just don't know.